Good morning, it's Helen from the Cut Flower Patch, here to sow the seeds from our September kit, September already. Um, we've got some lovely um, flowers and varieties lined up for September, so I'm looking forward to sowing those with you. Um, it looks like it's going to rain actually, so I'm just going to pop down to the greenhouse to actually, actually sow the seeds. Okay, so let's get started sowing our September seeds. Uh, first things first, don't forget your labels obviously with the name of the seed you're sowing and I always pop the date I've sowed them on the label. It's, I find it really useful to have a, a reference so I can uh, refer back to know how long it is since I sowed, sowed the seed. So today uh, what I've done is filled two 24 cell trays with sieved multi-purpose compost. Um, as I always say, you can use seed compost, but I find a good peat-free multi-purpose compost um, always works fine for me. I've sieved the compost uh, and I've also pressed it, depressed it down with another seed tray just to get rid of any air pockets. We don't want our seeds getting caught in air pockets. And I've also, also moistened it as well. You can moisten the compost after you've sown it, but I tend to find it a little bit easier to do it beforehand and um, it's it sort of protects the seeds a bit better saves you washing any seeds away um so what i'm going to do today is sow the orlea and amimagus in one seed tray and the calendula and the scabious in another seed tray mainly because the orlea and amimagus will probably take around 21 days to germinate and the scabious and the calendula will probably take about seven days so it's always quite useful to have um, have cells that take a, sorry seeds that take a similar amount of time to germinate in in the same tray. Um, the snapdragon I'm going to sow. This is a surface sown seed, so I'm going to sow that in one of my homemade trays. I think this was a tomato pot, um, which I've put a few holes in the bottom. We always need holes in the bottom for drainage. And again, I've filled that with sieved, multi-purpose peat-free compost. Okay, so first off, we will sow, um, I'll sow the calendula, which I've got that one out of the way so you can see. I'll sow that in here. So the calendula um, is beautiful. Um, it's also called a marigold. I've chosen the variety called Balls Improved Orange, um, and it is, uh, it is an edible flower, so you can actually um, add it to salads if you want to. Apparently it's got quite a peppery flavour. Um, I've chosen this variety because it's got unusually large flower heads so it makes it good good for cutting. So what I'm going to do um, is just pop using my cut flower patch dibber. If you don't have a dibber then by all means just use um, a pencil. I'm going to make a very small indentation into the into the compost and then I'm going to drop one seed into each of the cells. As I say these should take about seven to ten days to germinate. Um, I'm only sowing um, 12 of these. I'm going to hold some back and probably sow some in the spring as well. As I often say people tend to sow more seeds than they need and then you sort of get frustrated that you've You've got too many, you don't know what to do with them all. Um, obviously it's up to you um, how many you sow, but I think probably little and often is better and that tends to help with the space problem as well. So I'm just going to cover those over and then pop my label in for the calendula. And as I say, I'm going to put scabious into the other side uh, because that has a similar germ germ germination period. So again, um, just a small indentation in each of these. Um, scabious, um, I sowed some last year and they've been fantastic actually. They're still flowering now and they've been going since about May. Um, so I've been cutting them most days and also I've dried some as well. They dried very nicely. Um, and it's one of those, the more you cut, the more you get. So um, it's a very rewarding cut flower. I think I only popped two or three plants into my cut flower patch. And as I say, it's been flowering continually. So that's good. So I can certainly recommend this. 
Um, I've picked a really unusual variety as well. I've picked a, um, a red this time. So it's a really strong colour, so that's nice. I always try and pick quite a nice mix of colours and shapes and forms so we get lots of variety all through the summer. Okay, so I'm just going to cover those over. Again, with compost, because these need to be dark to germinate. Pop my seeds back in there. And then, um, when you've done that, as always, we need to cover this over. Oh, sorry, label. We need to cover it. I'd buy these. I have these um, pre-made forms like this, which I find quite useful. Um, if you don't have these, you can pop a shower cap over your seed tray, or you can put... Um, put it in a plastic bag. So that's going to go on the kitchen windowsill where um, I'm going to leave it until the seeds show the first signs of germination. So as soon as they germinate, I will take them, take the cover off and bring these back down to the greenhouse um, because they then need more light to germinate. So if I leave them on the kitchen windowsill, they like to get a bit leggy as they search for the light. Um, and then when they, um, start to show their two true leaves. So um, firstly, most cut flowers, when they start to germinate, will have what they call the seed leaves. Um, and then they'll form another set of leaves, which we call the true leaves. And it's at that point that we, uh, we need to uh, prick them out. And there is a video on the Cut Flower Patch website about pricking out, but we, we'll come on to that um, in good time. Okay. Okay, so now on to our Amimagus. Um, Amimagus is a really good filler, vase filler. Um, I sowed quite a lot of Amimagus last year, probably far too many in fact. And um, I got really big strong plants, which was great. Um, but probably um, I put into the patch more than I needed. Probably one or two plants um, would have been enough. So it, is quite, it did sort of dominate quite a bit. So what um, I've done this time is chosen a variety called Graceland, which has long straight stems and fewer side shoots. And I think that will, will work much better and hopefully not sort of take over the patch in quite the same way, quite the same experience I had last year. So these are small, um, very small seeds. So what I'm going to do is pop one seed in each of the cells. Um, actually, I did put some Amimagus in the flower beds as well. It was a really good filler, so um, I don't want to be too negative about it, but I suppose it's just a word of warning um, not to put too many into your patch, unless, of course, you've got a massive patch and you want to fill it. Um, so that is the Amimagus. Um, we're going to set, uh, cover it with compost in a, in a minute, but I'll put the all air in first because we're going to go through the same technique with the all layer. Um, this is another vase filler, not quite as big as the um, as the Amimagus and it is very very pretty sort of flat white heads. Um, it's an expensive seed so you have you've only got 30 in in your pack but because it's quite easy to to handle I just put one in each cell and then save some more for later in case you want to sew them later so again i'm going to pop that onto the surface um, as i say it's got a good long vase life this one and then when we pop all those in which i'm going to put the label in first so i don't forget which way around i've popped them um it is nice to have a big seed to handle <laughs> okay so um i'm going to pop the label in um, for each. I'm sorry, I've trapped the labels under here. Um, so I'll we'll layer this side and the Amimagus that side and then just sprinkle, light sprinkling of compost over each of these. And then when I've done that, um, like with the scabious and the calendula, I'm going to put the cover on there and then pop it on the kitchen windowsill. And again, as soon as um, they show the first signs of germination, which I say probably will be about 21 days in this case. I'm going to 
take the cover off and bring it down to the greenhouse. If you don't have a greenhouse, you can um, you can use a cold frame or um, sort of a polytunnel or just sort of clear plastic boxes. There's lots of other options, so um, you don't need a greenhouse. There is something on the Cut Flower Patch website. There is an article in the blog section about alternatives for greenhouses, and there's, there's lots of inex inexpensive ideas you could you could look at there. Okay, so now I've got the compost on those. Uh, lid on and up into the kitchen window so okay last but not least I'm going to sew the snapdragon the anti-rhinum as I say I've um, filled this with sieve multi-purpose compost I've moistened it again um, I had to put some holes into the bottom of this and um, when I made it from an old tomato container now snapdragon Again, I sewed some last year and they were absolutely fantastic. And uh, it's another one, the more you cut, the more you get. Um, the only slight problem with the um, Snapdragon that I sewed last year is they weren't actually um, very tall. They were quite a short flower. So they were getting a little bit lost in the vase. So this time um, I've chosen a variety which is taller. So this should grow to around 75 centimetres tall. Um, it's described as an F1 seed, which is sort of a hybrid seed, um, which normally means, well, one, they're quite expensive, so you don't get to that many seeds, but they do tend to um, deliver good results. So although they're, um, they're a bit more expensive, you don't get many seeds, hopefully you'll get sort of more robust, strong, upright plants. Um, so what I'm going to do, you've got around 50, probably a few more in your seed pack. I'm going to take roughly half of those and just sprinkle those as evenly as possible onto the surface. Um, I'm going to keep the others back because you can pretty much sew, sew these at any time, these snapdragon at any time. So I'm going to keep back the other half and I'll probably sew some more in the spring. Pop those on the surface. And again, I'm going to pop my label in, um, which again is here and then pop a plastic bag over that and put it on the kitchen window sill. So again, um, as soon as I show the first signs of germination, the bag will come off and it'll come down into the greenhouse uh, so it can benefit from the uh, extra light and air circulation. I thought I'd also show you quickly where I am with the seeds that we sowed in August. So this is the corn cockle, which is doing really well. Um, this was sown on the 2nd of August, so a month ago now. Um, once it got its first two true leaves, so it has its seed leaves and then it got its two true leaves, I pricked it out and potted them on into nine centimetre pots. Um, again, a video on the website if you need to know about pricking out. And pretty much the same with the cornflower. I lost a couple to the slugs, but again, it's got its seed leaves and then it's true leaves and uh, again I pick those out they put they took roughly the same amount of time to germinate now the nigella um again I've also picked that out and it's now in nine centimeter pots much more delicate than the corn cockle and the um and the cornflower but as you can see it's still doing doing pretty well um now the Iceland poppies are tiny, so I did take the decision to prick those out. Um, and I, they look okay, actually. I did get a few casualties on the way. I don't know if you can see that. It's very small, so um, you have to be really careful with them. But again, as you can see, it's got its seed leaves and its true leaves. So I pricked those out and they seem to be absolutely fine. Um, these were probably a couple of weeks behind, both the, sorry, both the Nigella and the Iceland poppies. We're probably a couple of weeks behind the corn cockle and the corn flower, which grew really quickly. Um, the larkspur I only uh, sowed quite recently because that was um, in the fridge, uh, going through the stratification process. So I haven't got any signs of germination yet. Okay, so I think that covers everything for the September seeds. Um, keep in touch and I'll um, look forward to seeing you soon.